We're just waiting on Scott to get dressed and all put together. Don't, don't mind us, okay? <laughs> it doesn't just happen over there. I mean, he's got to get himself all, all put together. And thank you, Mike, for lighting the candles. It was not forgotten. We appreciate that. I love your ketchup shirt. That's pretty cool. I've not seen that one before. That's pretty cool. Catch up with Jesus. That's all right. That's all right. I like that. That's pretty cool. Don't worry. It'll be worth the wait. Trust me. It'll be worth the wait. I hope you all had a wonderful week. Thank you for coming this morning. I hope that you truly hope that each one of us saw God at work in our lives, the opportunities that he put in front of us to let his light shine through us. I, I, I know I say that every week, but I want to keep it at the forefront of our thoughts, to let our lives reflect Jesus to everyone that we encounter, to be his light to those around us. I invite you to stand up this morning and just lift our voices to our Heavenly Father, thankful for who we are in Jesus Christ thankful for his everlasting mercies and his faithfulness and the grace that he showers upon us. Let us lift our voices to our King. Two, three, four. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder Above all kings, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice. Amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, yes he did, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your life, that I would be set free. done for me.
you've done for me. All that you've done for me. Good morning, everybody. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you this morning. We honor and praise you, Father. We lift your name up above all other names. And Father, we, we glorify your name. And Father, I thank you for each and every person that has decided, that has made a choice to give you this hour in worship. Father, we honor and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, if you get a chance today, Pappy and Connie have celebrated a wedding anniversary, and Kurt and Trina, I knew you were here somewhere, Kurt and Trina have celebrated a wedding anniversary, uh, and we celebrate with you. Amen. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, offering plates in the front and in the back. Did you notice that? In the front and in the back. Uh, so, uh, and our new meet and greet. So take a minute and meet and greet. Smile, turn around, wave at somebody.
truth of that. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. Father God, it is so good to be in your house with our brothers and sisters this morning, lifting our hearts and our voices as one to our King. I was lost, but you brought me in. I am free at last because Jesus has ransomed me. Your grace, Lord Jesus, runs deep. I was a slave to sin. I was a slave to sin. But Jesus died for me and set me free. Thank you for that truth, Jesus. May we hold on to that, not in this one hour where it's comfortable where we're together. But may we hold on to that truth each and every day. Because life is not easy to live. There are so many things out there that take our minds and our hearts and our eyes off of you. May, our, may we be focused repeatedly upon you and your word and how great your faithfulness is, Father. Beginning to end, Jesus, our lives are in your hands. You never let go. And this one thing I know, Father, that great is your faithfulness. May our voices continue to lift up as one, giving you praise and glory. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.
That is so true, correct? Amen. Amen. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here. From Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff will comfort me. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Are you picking up the theme? Mm -hmm. Psalm 94. When I said my foot is slipping, your love, O Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to me. And finally, from Romans chapter 8. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. That reminds me and tells me that there is one thing that has always been true, that our God is on his throne. Amen? Amen. No matter what we see going on, our Heavenly Father is on his throne. Why 
I start to worry now He is still the Lord of all we see He is still the loving Father Watching over you and me God is in control We believe that His children is in control. We pass these out to everyone that is in, I think, to everyone in attendance. Uh, if not, we have some extras. Uh, but take this with you. Hang on to it. Uh, if you didn't get one, I see, I see somebody with a look like they didn't get one. You, and I don't know who you are because you got a mask on, but it's okay. Everybody else get one? Uh, Keep this with you, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, continue to look at this if you want to uh, listen to somebody not as good as our praise band sing it. Uh, there's a, uh, um, a website there that you can go to. These words, I, I tell you, as, the more I look at these words, the more I appreciate the strength of these words. God is in control. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? We believe that his children will not be forsaken. Are you a child of God? Then you will not be forsaken. God is in control. We will choose to remember and never be shaken. We will not be shaken. There is no power above or beside him. If God is God, then there's nothing or nobody else that's on, on an equal level with him. If there was something greater than God, then guess what? That something greater than God would be God. By very definition. God is in control, ladies and gentlemen. As we go to prayer this morning, I ask that you, we have uh, some individuals in our church family that are going through health situations, and I ask that you keep them in your prayers. Um, Gary Effinger is having surgery Tuesday morning. I ask that you keep uh, Gary in your prayers. I ask that you keep Elsie Seifert in your prayers. Uh, my sister Emily was taken to the hospital this last week and had emergency surgery, and she is home and is doing well. I ask that you continue to lift her up in your prayers. If you have a prayer concern today, if you'll lift it up. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, as we come before you this day, Father, we honor you first and foremost. We honor you, Father. We acknowledge who you are. And Father, we, we celebrate with those that are celebrating. Father, with the family that had the tremendous joy of a baptism yesterday. Father, we celebrate. Father, we're overjoyed at this child that has decided to place their trust in you. Father, for those that are dealing with health issues, Father, I'm constantly reminded that Jesus would reach out and touch someone and they would be healed. And Father, 
We ask that. We ask for that, Father. Father, we lift all things up to you. And we place our trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are going to take a look at the Gospel of Matthew today, chapter 8. Matthew, chapter 8. <coughs> Excuse me. Starting with verse 23. When he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, <clears throat> so that the boat, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, you got to love allergies. I, uh, <clears throat> part of living in the valley of southern Indiana, right? <clears throat> And you know, as a kid, I don't remember being affected by allergies. I don't know what that means. Verse 24. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being covered with the waves. But Jesus himself was asleep. And they came to him, and they woke him, saying, Save us, Lord. We are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? You men of little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And it became perfectly calm. And the men were amazed. And they said, What kind of man is this? That even the winds and the sea Obey him. You know, when we take scripture and we begin to um, just allow the words of that scripture to soak in, and, and we take the words of the scripture, and again, as I've said before, I like to put myself into the scripture. So I imagine that I'm one of the disciples. I invite you to do the same. Imagine that you're one of the disciples. Jesus has just delivered the Sermon on the Mount. Tremendous sermon. The Sermon on the Mount. Jesus has healed people. Jesus has healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Jesus has healed different individuals. And then Jesus, as he comes down from the mountain, he says, you know what? And, and I'm, I'm going to put some words into Jesus' mouth here just to kind of understand what's happening here. Jesus is like, let's go to the other side. Let's get in the boat. Let, let's... Now, the Sea of Galilee is seven miles wide. 14 miles long, and it's in places it is 1,500 feet deep. Okay? So Jesus, he comes down from this mountain, the Sermon on the Mount, the healings that have taken place, and, and Jesus is like, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Now, I don't know about you, but every now and then I get like that. I enjoy being around people. I love being around people. But after a while, I'm like, you know what? I just want to retreat into my man cave and just leave me alone. I just need a little bit of time. Have you all ever been like that? You're around people or you're around people, you're around people, and you're like, I just need a few minutes. <laughs> I just need a few minutes. Jesus gets into the boat and he tells the disciples, come on, let's go. Let's go to the other side. Let's go to the other side. <clears throat> so they get into the boat, and Jesus fell asleep. What does that say to us, that Jesus fell asleep? He was human. He was tired. He'd been working hard. 
You may not know this, but after a Sunday morning, we eat lunch. You know what I like to do? I like to turn on a Cardinals baseball game and watch the first two innings and take a little nap and wake up for the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. And by the way, in case anybody, baseball started and the Cardinals are 2-0. and Thank you. They're 2-0. and That's right. So Jesus has been busy. And he's like, let's just get in the boat and go to the other side. He gets in the boat, and the gentle rocking of the boat, and the disciples are rowing, and Jesus, he's out. He's asleep. Jesus was 100% human and 100% God. He was the son of man and the son of God. Jesus was tired. He takes a nap. What happens? Storm comes up. How bad of a storm was it? It was pretty bad. The waves are crashing over the boat. Horrible storm comes up. What do the disciples do? They, they kind of panicked. They there's a little bit of panic in there. I mean, you, you read this and you can feel a little bit of panic. I Imagine the conversation among the disciples. Imagine the conversation. Hey, hey, <laughs> got your life jackets on? Hold on, boys, hold on. And at, how, how long did it take? Five minutes, 20 minutes? At what point? did the disciples say, go wake him up. No, you wake him up. No, you wake him up. <laughs> we'll get Mikey to do it, right? <laughs> we'll get Mikey to do it. One of us has to go wake him up. And it's like, I, I, you can imagine the, the human situation here. Well, who's going to wake him up? And finally, one of them said, I'll do it. <laughs> so they went and woke him up. Jesus wakes up from a nap. Jesus wakes up from his nap. <laughs> Let's look at this again. Verse 25. Verse 25. They came to him and woke him, saying, Save us. Lord, we are perishing. There was fear there. They thought they were going to die. <clears throat> the Sea of Galilee sits here. Just to the north of it is, is uh, Mount Carmel or Carmel. It's a mountain, snow capped. Even in the Holy Land, it's snow-capped. And the water comes down from that mountain and it feeds into the Sea of Galilee. And you can imagine the wind that comes down and blows across that Sea of Galilee. And the water, the waves getting bigger and bigger and bigger. These men were afraid for their life. Lord, save us. We are perishing. Jesus, we're going to die. Verse 26. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Now let's just stop right there for a second. Jesus says, why are you afraid? What would be our sarcastic response? <laughs> what do you mean, why are we afraid? <laughs> Don't you feel the boat rocking? Don't you feel the waves crashing in? Don't you see the thunder and lightning? What do you mean, why are we afraid? We're going to die. That's why we're afraid. And you're like, what? They were, they were human. They were afraid. Jesus said, why are you afraid, you men of little faith. Now that almost seems a little cruel, doesn't it? 
you men of little faith. Well, considering the circumstances, I think we'd all be afraid. Considering their circumstances, their fear is understandable. So then why does Jesus say, you men of little faith? Because of this very reason. Sure, they were afraid, the storm that's raging, but they forgot who was in the boat with them. If you go back into Genesis, in the beginning, God created, and you tie that in with John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things came into being by him. It was Jesus, the Son of God, who created the wind. It was Jesus who created the water and the waves. It was Jesus that created the Sea of Galilee. So Jesus is like, did you forget? I'm right here with you. Did you forget that I was in the boat with you? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. Well, he could do that because he created the wind. He created the sea. And the men were amazed and said, What kind of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? They didn't understand who was in the boat with them. They had heard Jesus preach the Sermon on the Mount. They had seen Jesus perform some healings. But they still weren't completely convinced of who he was. There was still that little bit of, of, of wondering, who is this guy? Is he the Son of God? Is he a prophet? Is he a good man? Or is he taking us for a ride? There had to be a little bit of, because they, they still didn't know who he was. Let me ask you a question. In your life, and you don't have to answer out loud, in your life, are you going through a storm? Have you been through a storm? Are you going to go through a storm tomorrow, next week? The answer is always sure, because we're human, and we live in a fallen world. So ladies and gentlemen, there are storms that we're going to go through, and sometimes it's a little storm, and sometimes it's a huge storm. And sometimes we're going to think that our life is going to capsize. And sometimes we're going to think that the outside events of the world are, are going to completely destroy our life. Just like these disciples. But let me remind you this morning that Jesus is with you. He's with you. Now, did, did these disciples have to go through the storm? Yes. Do we have to sometimes go through a storm? Yes. But Jesus is with us. The song that we sang today, God is what? In He's in control. We believe that his children will not be forsaken. God is in control. We will choose to remember. Huh, there's a storm coming. It's starting to rain. I hear thunder. I see some light. Oh, well. We choose to remember and never be shaken. There is no power above or beside him. We know God is in control. And if we're in the boat because Jesus told us to get into the boat, and Jesus is in the boat with us, what do we have to worry about? God is in control. 
He was not going to allow those disciples to die that day on the Sea of Galilee because he had a plan for them. Are you going to die because of this or this or this or this? Not unless God's plan for you on this earth is finished. Well, you don't understand how big the storm... If God is not finished with you yet, then you're not going to die. Now, does that mean that we get in a boat without a lifesaver? No. Of course we get, take a lifesaver with us. And if you're like I am, when I get on a boat, I keep my lifesaver, I keep it in that little cabinet with the door shut. <laughs> but it's with me. It's with me. So are, should we just live dangerously on purpose? No. But ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to die unless God himself has decided that your time is up. And if God has decided that your time is up, then all of the safety precautions you take is not going to make a bit of difference, is it? Because God has decided and again, I'm not talking about living dangerously on purpose. But ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, why are you afraid? And he's saying the same thing to us today. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? The other day, our daughter came to our house and three of the grandkids and Susie and I, neither one of us was home. And we, we love our grandkids, but I got to tell you, when I got home later that day and I walked into that house, it was like, it was like a cyclone had gone through that house. There, were toy, there was a toy in our living room I'd never even seen before. I don't know where it came from. The house was like our grandkids had been there. And I looked... And there was this little pillow. Now, this pillow has been in our house for years. But I never really noticed it before. You ever do things like that? I never really looked at this pillow. Maybe I'd looked at it and I was like, yeah, there's a pillow. This pillow jumped out at me the other day. Absolutely jumped out at me. from Hebrews 10, 23. Scripture on this pillow. Somebody gave this to Susie years ago. And it says, He who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10, Maybe I needed a pillow to remind me of the truth of God's word. He who promised is faithful. And what did Jesus Christ himself promise us? I am with you always. I am with you always. I praise God for this pillow. I praise God that our grandkids were in the house the other day and a little bit of chaos ensued apparently because of this pillow, who knows where it was and how long it's been. I don't even know where it was, but all of a sudden this pillow showed up. And I said something to Susie later. I said, where'd that pillow come from? She said, it's been here for years. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh. He who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10.23. I'm going to take a nap this afternoon with this, my new favorite pillow. And what better to lay your head on than the Word of God? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for your Word. 
Father, I thank you that Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. Father, I pray that as each one of us, as we go through our life, there's going to be days when there's going to be a storm. Father, help us to remember that Jesus Christ is with us. Just as these disciples needed to be reminded that the Son of God was with them. And there was no reason to be afraid. Even though there was a storm, there was no reason to be afraid because the Son of God was with them. Father, help us. Strengthen us. Encourage us. Remind us of your word. That he who promised is faithful. Father, help us to trust you. Father, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please stand for our closing song?
Isaiah chapter 40 says, We will be lifted up on wings like eagles. Father God, I pray your blessings on your people today. Lord, thank you that you're in the boat with us. I pray that we are reminded again and again that you are with us. I pray your blessings on your people today. In Jesus' name, amen.